temperature. So Parker did his uh, MSc in physics from Guwahati University in 2016. And uh, in the same year, he cleared the IAST exam uh, and uh, joined 2017 January Dutch uh, <coughs> under IAPU PhD program. So after completing one year coursework, he joined our group uh, to work on stellar and nuclear astrophysics. And his thesis entitled Chemical Abundances of Metal Post Stars as Probes of Neutron Capture Nuclear Synthesis that is supported by six high-impact SCI journal papers published in MNRS Astronomical Journal and uh, uh, Astronomy and Astrophysics. And he submitted his thesis last year in June, and today he is going to defend his thesis. So I, once again, I welcome you all for his thesis presentation. So he will make a presentation for about 40 minutes, and then that will be followed by a discussion, question answer session. And Pandicherry uh, um, University has nominated Professor uh, Devendra Ujha, Senior Professor of PIF for Mumbai, as the external examiner for the Paibabos examination. So I welcome Professor Ujha and request him to conduct the Paibabos examination. Uh, Professor Ujha, yeah. can you okay. please? Yeah, thanks, Aruna. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Partha can start now. It's presentation. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. As you can see, I'll be talking about chemical abundances of metal pore stars as probes of neutron capture nucleosynthesis. Uh, this is my thesis title. This is the outline of the talk. I have prepared the outline uh, in line with my uh, thesis chapters. Before starting, let me highlight the main achievements of the thesis. We have performed a first time detailed high resolution spectroscopic analysis of 20 metal pole stars. We have confirmed the recent claims that I process is responsible for the formation of camp R stars. We have put forward a new classification scheme to distinguish camp S and camp R stars. We have identified a new site where I and S processes can operate in succession. And we have derived the mass distributions of the progenitor AZBs of barium stars, and we found that the mass distributions of the progenitors of mild and strong barium stars are different. So, as the title suggests, my thesis is aimed at understanding neutral capture nucleosynthesis by studying the chemical composition of metal posters. So, first, I will briefly discuss what neutral capture nucleosynthesis is, and then I will go to metal posters. We know that the elements up to iron are produced by fusion, and the elements which are heavier than iron cannot be produced by fusion. These elements are produced by neutron capture nucleosynthesis. And classically, there are two known neutron capture processes. One is S process or slow neutron capture process. The other one is R process or rapid neutron capture process. In S process, the neutron capture time scale is much longer than the beta decay time scale. In R process, the neutron capture time scale is much shorter than the beta decay time scale. In S process, the required neutron density is around 10 to the power 7 to 10 neutrons per centimeter cube. In R process, the required neutron density is 10 to the power 20 to 25 neutrons per centimeter cube. The proposed sites for S process are low and intermediate mass AZB stars, and the proposed sites for R process are supernovae and neutron star mergers. Barium is considered as a representative element of S process and europium is considered as a representative element of R process. Uh, this is a snapshot of an uh, R process. Uh, this is a snapshot of R process where the horizontal axis is neutron number and the vertical axis is proton number. All the back black squares here uh, represent the elements or isotopes that can be, that can be produced by uh, S process and the colored squares represent the elements which can be produced by R process. So if we already know all these things about uh, the neutral capture nucleosynthesis, then what is there to be known? This is a plot from a recent review. The upper panel shows a light element magnesium, and the lower panel shows a, a neutral capture element europium. So, and the x-axis is metallicity. As we go towards lower metallicity design, the neutron capture elements show a huge scatter. 
And this is not only true for European, this is true for all neutral gaps or processes. And this uh, scatter cannot be explained by considering uh, the uncertainties in, in abundance estimation or by any nuclear synthesis theories. So these diverse abundance ratios of neutral capture elements in metal power stars demand a comprehensive analysis of the abundance peculiarities based on a large number of uh, metal power stars, which is currently lacking. So what are metal power stars? Here I have shown uh, the sample spectra of two stars. The yellow star is the uh, sun, this is the solar spectrum, and the red one is a spectrum of one of our program stars. We can clearly see that the number of lines in this red spectra, spectrum is much less than the number of lines in the sun because the metal content of this red star is 1000 times less than that of the sun. So these are metal pore stars. We define metallicity with this relation given in yellow. And if for stars which have uh, Fe by H less than zero, we call those stars as metal pore stars. So metal pore stars are population two stars, which are formed from the ejecta of the first stars in the universe. So they carry the uh, imprints of the early universe. By studying the chemical composition of the metal pore stars, we can try to understand the primordial lithium abundance, the nature of the first stars, early nucleosynthesis and early galactic chemical evolution. And most importantly, by studying the chemical composition of metal pore stars, we can try to understand neutral capture nucleosynthesis and their production sites. Because a large fraction of metal pore stars show enhancement of heavy elements. By the term heavy elements, I mean the elements which are heavier than iron. So three such types of stars are barium stars, which are enhanced in as processed elements, CH stars, which are enhanced in as processed elements, and carbon, and CAM stars or carbon enhanced metal pore stars. Now, based on the abundances of S process and R process elements, carbon enhanced metal pore stars are divided into four subclasses. In camp no stars, heavy elements are not enhanced. In camp S stars, S process elements like uh, barium is enhanced. In camp R stars, R process elements like europium is enhanced. And in camp R stars, both S and R process elements are enhanced. So this subclass of camp stars draws special attention because I have already discussed that S and R process elements are produced in completely different stellar sites with different physical conditions. So, and these stars are carrying both S and R process elements. So in the thesis, we have mainly uh, studied CAMP S and CAMP R stars. Now the scope of the thesis as spectroscopists, our prime objective is to derive elemental abundances as accurately as possible so that they can be used as uh, constraints in the theoretical models of neutron capture nuclear synthesis. We also want to understand the production channels of CAMP S, CAMP RS and barium stars and hence understand the origin and evolution of neutron capture uh, elements. We have selected our samples, uh, program stars, pro metal pore pro program, uh, program stars from several catalogs of catalogs from the literature. And we have accurate high resolution spectra of the program stars using HESP attached to HCT, HDS attached to Subaru, and FEROS attached to ESURPG. We have used IDAF and HESP pipeline for data reduction, and the standard data reduction procedure has been followed. For finding the atmospheric parameters and elemental abundances, we have used the radiative transfer code MOOC. And for model atmospheres, we have used Kuru's grid of model atmospheres, and model atmospheres are selected with, uh, with the help of an iterative process. We have used FE1 and clean and unblended FE1 and FE lines for uh, finding the atmospheric parameters. As initial gases, we have uh, gases of effective temperature. We have used color temperature calibrations of Alonso et al. Uh, 2000, uh, 1996 and 1999. And we have used parallax method to find log Z as initial gas. Then we have used uh, the conventional method of estimation of atmospheric parameters, such as excitation potential balance for effective temperature, equivalent to its balance for microturbulent velocity, and ionization equilibrium uh, for log Z. We have derived the elemental abundances with the help of equivalent to method and spectrum synthesis method. Spectrum synthesis method is mostly applied for the stars, uh, for the uh, elements which show hyperfine splitting and to find the elemental abundances from molecular bands. We have derived the element uh, abundances of 16 light elements from carbon through zinc and 14 heavy elements from strontium uh, through 
live. So we have also derived some abundance ratios like excess by LS, the ratio of heaviest process elements to lightest process elements, then barium by European, lanthanum by European, and carbon 12 by carbon 13 ratio. These are the derived atmospheric parameters of our program stars. Uh, the effective temperature ranges from 4150 Kelvin to 6350 Kelvin. The log Z ranges from 0 0.2 to uh, 4.28. Metallicity ranges from minus 0 0.1 to minus 3.5. Now, based on the metallicities, carbon abundance, barium abundance, and European abundance, we have uh, we have classified our objects in this way. We have found one normal metal core star, five barium stars, one CH star, six camp S stars, and three camp R stars. We have also found the three extremely metal core stars and one very unique star that I'll discuss in our later slides. In our first project, we tried to understand uh, the formation scenarios of Camp S and Camp R stars in context to the Camp S and Camp R stars of our study. We have found six Camp S stars and three Camp R stars. So this is the uh, formation scenario for Camp S stars. Suppose there are two, uh, there, there is a binary system. One star is slightly massive than the other one. So the slightly massive star will evolve faster. It will go to AGB phase. In the AGB phase, it will produce S process elements and carbon, and it will transfer the S process elements to the uh, companion. And the companion becomes an S process enriched star. And after the AGB phase is over, a white dwarf remains. So, this is the most widely accepted formation scenario for CH stars, barium stars, and camp S stars, because all these stars are found in uh, binary systems with invisible uh, companion, which is a white dwarf. There are several formation scenarios to explain the abundance peculiarities of camp R stars. I have already discussed that camp R stars carry both S and R process elements, which are produced in different stellar sites. Uh, there are several proposed formation scenarios for camp, uh, camp R stars without any conclusive evidences. In this paper, we have discussed all those formation scenarios uh, in context to our program stars. None of these formation scenarios can explain the abundance patterns of our stars. Uh, here in this talk, I will discuss three of these scenarios. This is the first one. Let us consider a triple star system. One star is massive, one is intermediate, and one is low mass star. So the massive star will evolve the fastest. It will undergo supernova explosion. In the supernova, it, it may produce R process elements, and it may transfer the R process elements to the companions. Now the companions become R process enriched. Then, uh, with time, this slightly massive star will evolve to AGB phase. In the AGB phase, it will produce S process elements and it will transfer the S process elements to the companion. Now the companion becomes a camp R star. Here, the companion has got S process elements from the AGB stars and R process elements from the supernova. But this scenario is rejected because it is highly unlikely that this triple star system will, will survive such a nearby supernova explosion for further mass transfer. This is the second scenario that I'll discuss. Uh, let us again consider a binary system. The slightly massive star will uh, evolve to AGB phase. In the AGB phase, it will produce S process elements and it will transfer the S process elements to the companion. Now, with time, uh, after the AGB phase, this becomes a white dwarf. And with, with time, the camp S star will evolve to Zion phase. In the Zion phase, it may transfer mass back to the white dwarf. And the white dwarf may get into accretion induced collapse. And in the accretion induced collapse, it may produce R process elements and transfer the R process elements to the companion. Now, the companion has got S process elements from the AGB star and R process elements from the accretion induced collapse. Now, this scenario has two drawbacks. One, uh, all the camp R stars that we study are not in giant phase, some of them are in uh, main sequence turn off phase. And the second one is, it is not yet known whether accretion induced collapse can really produce R process elements. So this hypothesis is also rejected. This is the third one. Let us consider that a binary system is formed from an R process enriched ISM. Now this ISM may be enriched with R process by several mechanisms like neutron star, neutron star merger, or supernova. And this star has got R process elements from the ISM itself. Then this a uh, slightly massive star will go to AGB phase. In the AGB phase, it will produce S process elements and it will transfer the S process elements to this star. Now, this star has become camp RS, getting S process elements from the AGB and R from the uh, ISM itself. In all these scenarios, we have, we have seen that 
S process and R process elements are produced in different stellar sites, and somehow they come to the star that we are observing as a camp R star now. But there is a tight correlation between uh, S process element barium and R process element europium, and this is noticed for both camp S and camp R stars. And this correlation of S and R process elements cannot be explained if it is considered that the elements are produced in different stellar sites. So, uh, an intermediate process or I process has recently been suggested. This, which can produce both S and R, uh, R process elements in a single stellar site. So the I process is intermediate in the sense that the required neutron density is intermediate to that of S process and R process. In S process, the required neutron density is 10 to the power 7 to 10 neutrons per centimeter cube. In R process, it is 10 to the power 20 to 25 neutrons per centimeter cube. But in I process, the required neutron density is 10 to the power 12 to 15 neutrons per centimeter cube. That means in between uh, the S and R region. And the proposed sites for I process, there are several proposed sites, but here I will consider only the low and intermediate mass energy resistors because it has got some observational evidences. The other proposed scenarios has not, uh, there are no near observational evidences for the other proposed scenarios. So this scenario is same as that of the uh, S process. Now, Hempel and their group in 2016 have calculated I process yields for several constant neutron densities. And they could successfully reproduce the observed abundances in 20 well known camp R stars. And we also want to see whether I process can uh, reproduce the observed abundances of our program cells. So, before that, let me uh, give a slight idea of this, this model, this model uh, of Hempel et al. <clears throat> so, this is the schematic diagram of an SGB star. This is the interstellar region where both S and I process can take place. These are the input parameters of the interstellar region. These are the chemical composition and these are the physical uh, parameters. Now, when the neutron exposure was switched on for 10 to the power 5 years, 10 to the power 5 years is the uh, time period of inter, it is the interpulse period. So when the neutron exposure was switched on for 10 to the power 5 years, it was observed that light S process peak shifts to krypton 86 from strontium yttrium zirconium and heavy S process peak shifts to iodine 135 from barium. Then when the neutron exposure was switched off for around 10 to the power 6 years, it was noticed that krypton 86 decays to the stable LS isotopes and iodine-135 decays to barium-135. Now decays of praseodymium, uh, neodymium, and promethium isotopes produce europium-151 and europium-153. So this is how I process can produce both S and R process elements. Now, before comparing their yields, their I process uh, model yields with our observed abundances, we have to understand that I process yields are calculated for the interstellar region of this LGB star. And uh, there, with third grade up, they come to the stellar surface. Up then, uh, it will be transferred to the star that we're observing as a camp R star now. So, in the comparison relation, we have to use a dilution factor D. Here, X is the abundances of this star, Xi is the I process yield and X sun is the solar scale abundances. We have used a chi-square <coughs> analysis, sorry. Uh, and we found that I process models with neutron densities of 10 to the power 12 to 15 neutrons per centimeter cube can give satisfactory uh, fit to our observed abundances of the camp R stars. Then we extended this study to uh, eight more camp R stars found in the literature for which the production channels were not known and not studied. So we, for those eight stars also, we tried the same thing and we found that can all camp R stars could be uh, reproduced well with the I process models with neutron densities 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 15 neutrons per centimeter cube. So this was the idea of the neutral, uh, this was the idea of chemical evolution till around uh, 2014, where it was considered that S process and R process produce both of, produce all uh, neutron capture elements. But now uh, we can safely include I process into the picture. And I process now also, uh, also uh, helps in the chemical evolution of the universe. Our second project was motivated by an outlier HD 145777. This is a very metal poster with metallicity minus 2.17. The abundance of carbon is also very high. Barium is uh, barium by Fe is 1.27, and barium by europium is 0.47. 
So we could not classify this object uh, based on any existing classification schemes. Some classification, cl some classification scheme uh, put this object as a camp ester. Some classification scheme put this object as a camp arrester. And I process model predictions cannot reproduce the observed evidences of heavy elements in this term. So this this term uh, motivated us to revisit the classification schemes of camp S and camp arresters because it is to distinguish the camp S and camp arresters is crucial to understand the basic physics underlying uh, these two processes. The first classification scheme was given by Beers, Beers and Prislip in 2005, and after that, several proposed uh, several classification schemes have been uh, proposed. And we have, uh, and uh, with the ever growing data sets and advancement of theoretical predictions, it is highly, now it is highly crucial to, to, uh, to again look for the classification scheme carefully. So we have critically analyzed all the classification schemes. First, we try to see whether excess by LS can be used as a classifier. Now, excess is the average abundance of heavy S process elements, barium, lanthanum, cerium, and neodymium. And LS is the uh, average abundance of light as processed elements, troncium, yttrium, and zirconium. We have in HS, we have not used the other two uh, second, second peak elements, samidium and uh, I think promethium. So it is noticed for a long time that HS by LS is higher in camp arresters compared to camp esters. So we try to see whether HS by LS can be used as a classifier of camp S and camp arresters. For that, we have uh, we have compiled abundance data for 72 well-known, well-studied camp S and camp arresters, and we calculated HS by LS, barium by europium, lanthanum by europium, and all other uh, ratios in those terms. In the uh, left, in the left plot, we can see that as we go towards lower metallicity design, HS by LS increases. This is because as we go towards lower metallicity, the neutron to seed ratio increases, and hence heaviest processed elements are produced in produced in more extent. And in the plot in the right side, we can see that, that camp S and camp arresters cover the same range in LS by FE, but HS by FE is more in camp arresters than that of camp esters. Because for the production of camp arresters, neutron density was more. And this is one of the evidences of existence of I process. <laughs> then when we uh, plotted the histogram of HS by LS for camp S and camp arresters, we found that although they peaked at different values of HS by LS, but there is a clear overlap from 0 to 1.5. So HS by LS cannot be used as a classifier of camp S and camp arresters. <clears throat> then we have uh, looked for the other classification schemes, existing classification schemes. This is the most uh, this is the oldest one uh, that is Beers in Crisley 2005, and this is the most recent one by Hansen et al. 2009. So, in this barium by European case, this red grid defines the region defined defined for camp arresters. But we can see that some camp arresters are falling outside the region also. So this classification scheme fails, and in its in this one, strontium by barium. This black grid is the region defined for camp esters, and the red grid is the region defined for camp arresters. And we can see that the camp esters are everywhere. So, strontium by barium also fails. So, we have critically analyzed all the classifiers, and we found that none of the classifiers can effectively distinguish camp S and camp arresters. So, we have put forward one, uh, put forward a new classification scheme based on the evidences of barium, europium, and lanthanum. Here, in our classification scheme, this red grid is the region defined for camp arresters. And if a star falls in this uh, this uncertain region defined by black grid, we have to look for European abundance. If European is greater than one, the star is a camp arrester. If European is less than one, the star is a camp ester. So this is a uh, more effective classification scheme than the others. The third project is about a very peculiar star, HE1005 minus 1439. So, this is an extremely metal poor star with metallicity minus 3.03. .03. We could derive the elemental abundances for 12 heavy elements from strontium through lead. Our classification scheme put this star as a camp ester, but the XS by LS ratio is close to the camp arrester peak. 
So we wanted to see whether S process or I process can fit the abundance pattern of these curves. So we used fruity models to uh, find the S process skills, and we used fruity models to see whether S process can reproduce the abundance patterns of the uh, problem set. And we found out that S process models cannot reproduce the observed abundances of the star because more than two points are out of the field. Then we checked whether I process can fit the abundance pattern. Uh, I process model yields are taken from Hempel et al. 2016. And we found that I process also cannot reproduce the observed abundance pattern of the star. Then we want to, wanted to see if any combination of S, I, or R processes can uh, reproduce the observed evidence pattern of the star. So we use this parametric model function. And we found that a model, a parametric model with S process, 56% S process contribution, 44% I process contribution, and no R process contribution can give a satisfactory, satisfactory fit to the uh, problem star. So this object forms a new class of objects with a distinct evidence pattern that has never been observed before. So we wanted to uh, we wanted to see the, how this star could have formed. We could derive the uh, radial velocity of this star for star for three epochs, and we found that this star shows radial velocity variation. So we attempted to capture a formation scenario for this object involving a binary picture and. In that case, the S process comes from the AZB star, and R process may come, I process elements may come from uh, a very late thermal pulse. But later, we found out that very late thermal pulse can produce S process, the first peak elements, two, two decades more than the second peak elements. So, this very late thermal pulse cannot be the source of I process in our star. Then, we uh, thought of this scenario where S process comes from the AZB. And R process may come from the pre enrichment of I process, um, I process ISL. Uh, but lead, which is the uh, most, which is the main, which is the main uh, element in this metallicity stars, main S process element in this metallicity stars minus three. Lead is produced, lead is in the star is 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 that lower than S process predictions. But if we consider I process elements have come from uh, the ISL, then lead should be more than the S process predictions. It cannot be less than that. So a pre enrichment with I process elements is also not possible. So we thought of another uh, permission scenario for this object. But before that, let me briefly discuss the AZB evolution. So this is the schematic diagram of an AZB star that I have already shown. This is the carbon oxygen degenerate core. This is the hydrogen binding shell. This is the intershell region. This is the helium binding shell. And this is the conductive envelope. Now, in AZB stars, these two shells, hydrogen binding shell and helium binding shells, operate one after the other. So, when the helium binding shell operates, it, it burns in a thermal runaway and it, it produces a thermal pulse in the intershell region. And that thermal pulse makes the intershell region convective and the outer layers are pushed outwards. So when the outer layers are pushed outwards, it becomes cooler and the hydrogen binding shell disappears. When the hydrogen binding shell disappears, the convective envelope comes down to the intershell region and it dredges up all the material that has been produced in the intershell region, that means the, whether it is S process elements or I process elements, and it uh, dredges up all the material to the surface. So this is the, uh, then after that, after the third dredge up happens, the hydrogen binding shell again starts operating and it will produce helium and it will deposit helium to the intercell region. And when a critical value of helium is reached, this helium binding shell again starts operating. And this process continues till the convective envelope is completely blown away by stellar wind. So, this is the uh, evolution. This is how the AZB star evolves. And there are many knowns and many unknowns about AZB evolution. So it is known that S and I process elements are produced in the intercell region of the AZB star because the physical conditions required are possible only in the intercell region. And the source, uh, source of neutrons for different AZB masses is also known. The neutron densities required for S process and I processes are known because this comes from uh, nuclear physics theory. What is unknown is the actual physical conditions for the production of enough neutrons for S process and I process nucleosynthesis. 
The model still consider free parameters in case of convection and mass loss because the mass loss efficiency and convection are uh, still poorly understood in these terms. In the time scale of this, uh, which makes sense? The same process that we just spoke about. What is the time scale? This, this, uh, okay. So between the one helium burning shell, uh, one helium shell burning to the next helium shell burning, it is tended for five years for a uh, 1.5 solar mass object. And the thermal pulse period is around uh, 100 years. Yeah. So this is the neutron source for uh, low mass low metals DNG stars, where a carbon 13 captures an alpha alpha and produces oxygen 16 and neutron. But for the production of carbon 13, we, we need carbon 12 to capture proton or hydrogen. But the intercell region is devoid of hydrogen. So uh, in models, there are two proposed uh, uh, the two proposed mechanisms. One is partial mixing of proton, one is proton ingestion episodes. So what the modelers do is that they introduce hydrogen artificially into the uh, intercell region. If it is injected during the interpulse period, which is radiative, then as processed neutron densities can be produced. If it is in injected during the uh, thermal pulse period, which is convective, then it is called proton ingestion episodes and high process neutron densities can be achieved. So we propose uh, a we propose that for the formation of the star, we propose that a model which undergoes proton ingestion episode during the beginning of the thermal pulse SGB phase, uh, followed by a limited number of thermal pulses, might explain uh, the abundance peculiarity of this star, HC1005 minus 1439. And the constraints, ab uh, the abundance constraints from this star can help us understand the important clues like uh, interplay between proton ingestion episodes and partial mixing of protons. It can also help us understand the uh, physical conditions required for pure S process or pure I process production. And it can also help us explain the overlap between HS by LS ratio in camp S and camp RS stars and the smooth transition of uh, from the camp S to camp RS present. The fourth project is about barium stars. Uh, barium stars are divided into two groups. One is strong barium stars, and the other one is mild barium stars. So, as the name suggests, strong barium stars are uh, the stars which has HS by Fe greater than 0 0.6, and mild barium stars are the, are the, are the stars which has HS by Fe between 0 0.25 to 0 0.6. So, there are two proposed scenarios for the uh, mild enhancement in the mild barium stars. One is long period binaries, that means the, if the Binary system is a long period binary, that means separation is more. So mass mass transfer efficiency is less, and that's how the star has got uh, less is as process element. The second one is the less efficient neutral production in the progenitor series. The first scenario uh, was rejected recently by uh, Zorisen et al. 2019. They found that there is no correlation between uh, enhancement of as process elements and the orbital separation. So for both mild and uh, strong barium stars, the orbital periods overlap. We derived masses of barium stars from around 205 barium stars taken from literature using etcher diagram. And we plotted the mass distribution of barium stars uh, for both mild and strong barium stars. And we found that mass distribution of mild and strong barium stars uh, is same. So they occupy the same mass frames. Then we tried to see whether uh, we can find the masses of the AZB stars. The masses of the wide dwarf companions of the barium stars has already been studied by many groups by long term radial velocity monitoring programs. But no, no study has yet been done on the masses of the AZB star. So we tried to uh, fit the AZB yields because the fruity models can give AZB yields for different masses starting from 1.3 to 6 solar mass at different metallicities. Suppose for a star, uh, a, for a particular metallicity, we take the fruity model at that metallicity and we derive, we uh, calculate the yields at different masses. So we fit the abundance pattern of our barium star with the AZB yields at different masses. And the best fit corresponding, the mass corresponding to the best fit gives the mass of the uh, company in AZB. So, like this, we have uh, 
We have extended this study to 205 barium stars found in the literature, and we um, we derived the mass distribution of the uh, mild and strong the AZB components of mild and strong barium stars. And we found that the progenitor mass distribution of strong barium stars peak at 2.5 solar mass, and the progenitor mass distribution of mild barium stars peak at 3.7 solar mass. So uh, we propose that the initial masses of the progenitor AZBs of the barium stars dominantly control the formation of mild and strong barium stars. So let me read out this uh, summary because I have included some points here that I didn't I include in the talk. So we have carried out detailed chemical composition studies of 20 stars based on high quality, high resolution spectra, out of which, which we have identified one normal metal poster, five barium stars, one C8 star, six camp S stars, three camp R stars, three extremely metal posters, and one unique star uh, that may be called as camp I star. <clears throat> In the neutron capsule elements enriched stars, the absence of technetium lines and the low values of carbon 12 by carbon 13 ratio uh, points that the stars are extrinsic in, in nature. So, a binary mass transfer scenario is the most probable formation scenario for the observed abundances uh, of the heavy elements. With the help of a parametric model based analysis, we have confirmed that the recent, uh, we have confirmed the recent claims that I process is, the, uh, is responsible for the formation of camp R stars. We have critically analyzed the different criteria used by various authors for camp S and camp R stars. And we found that HS by LS cannot be used to classify the camp S and camp R stars. So we have put forward a new classification criteria to distinguish the camp S and camp R stars based on the abundances of barium, lanthanum, and europium. We have discovered a star HE1005 1439 with a unique abundance pattern from which we could identify a new production site where I process and S process uh, can operate in succession. We have critically analyzed many possible formation mechanisms for HC1005 uh, 1439, but none of them is found to match the observed overabundances. So we found that the progenitor. Uh, so based on our analysis, we have proposed a scenario involving a binary picture in which both I and S process nucleosynthesis occur in succession in the primary company of the S star. We found that the progenitor mass distribution of mild and strong barium stars peak at different values, while the progenitor stars mass distribution of mild barium stars peak at 3.7 solar mass. For the strong barium stars, the peak appears at 2.5 solar mass. So this gives enough evidence to conclude that masses of the progenitor LDPs play a dominant role in the formation of mild and strong barium stars. So in future, we plan to extend this study for a larger sample of camp S and camp R stars covering a wider range in metallicity using high resolution spectroscopy. Uh, we'll attempt to put tighter constraints in terms of elemental abundances to understand the switching between S process and I process nucleosynthesis in low mass AGB stars. A large homogeneous sample of these stars is expected to provide useful information regarding metallicity and uh, mass dependence of I process nucleosynthesis. We have observed a large sample of, of field metal core stars at low resolution to identify the carbon enhanced stars. These stars will be followed up with high resolution spectroscopy for detailed study. These are my uh, list of publications. These are the uh, conference participants. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bhakta, for a very nice presentation. He's given an enormous amount of work, actually, and he has presented uh, them so nicely. In just 30 minutes, it's great. So, uh, Professor Ojha. Yeah, yeah, please, yeah. Yes? So, yeah, we it's just now open for questions. Yeah, so maybe we can ask questions first from audience. Okay, uh, so if there are no more questions, then I will go back to uh, Dr. Oja. Okay, so, so I have to say final words or? Yes. Okay, so I think um, um, based on, I think, the well-written thesis and good number of papers and excellent presentation today and uh, good question answering, I think uh, we declare that uh, PhD degree should be awarded to Partha. So congratulations, Partha. Uh, uh, congratulations, Partha. And uh, Partha, um, you know, he's a very kind person. And uh, he to show his gratitude to IAA. 
and uh, his, you know, whatever his association with IA, he has painted a very nice picture and he wants to give it a gift to IA. So uh, maybe, um, uh, maybe in absence of the director, maybe. Okay, okay. One of your single person, please, please take it. Yes, please, please, both of you, both of you, please come. And it is a big one. So I think you need. Wow. Yeah. So just a few seconds. Aruna, you also come. You have produced such a good student. Wow, that's a really great painting. Uh, congratulations, Partha, and uh, very nice presentation, actually. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, Lata. So, uh, oh, great, great. She has an answer in all so, uh, Devendra, yeah, so I think we can uh, close the meeting, yeah, we can close the meeting, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you, everybody. okay, congratulations to you also. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And thank you, Olna, for yeah, your congratulations, time. Aruna. Uh, thank you. Aruna. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay, bye.